Please be seated. Good morning, St. Paul's. Good morning. What a joy it is to be with you to be with you here today again. My year here as a young adult service corps volunteer back in 2014 and 2015 seems just like yesterday, and it was such a transformative experience for me. So transformative, in fact, that I went on to seminary soon after I returned to the United States, and then by the grace of God, was ordained a priest in the Episcopal Church in 2021. And so now, in the blink of an eye, your faithful intern is back, albeit with no hair, in this beautiful nave, in this amazing city, and looking out at many, many familiar faces. My heart is full. Today, I do not come alone. I bring with me 15 other pilgrims from the Cathedral of All Souls in Asheville, North Carolina. We are together the Episcopal Youth Community, or EYC, a group of teenagers who meet regularly throughout our year to learn what it means to follow Jesus, to do service work, to help our community, and then also just to have fun. Thank you, Father Austin. Thank you, Malia. Thank you for being so hospitable to us as we have made our home in your city. As Father Austin may have mentioned earlier, we are on a pilgrim, a pilgrimage in the, in the steps of St. Francis of Assisi. We've been spending a lot of time this year studying this person. We are not just here for gelato, uh, although my youth might seem to think that sometimes, but we are on pilgrimage, a pilgrimage that we've been planning for, that we have been preparing for, we have a window dedicated in our church in All Souls, our home back in North Carolina. And many of our group had never really studied him or learned about him before they arrived. So we've been studying a lot. We've been learning a lot. We learned about St. Francis's love of creation. We learned about his embrace of the leper, his welcome to the stranger. We learned about his time spent as a prisoner of war, his exchange of peace with the Sultan of Egypt, Yesterday, we were so fortunate to spend an entire day in Assisi. We got to experience and witness this place where Francis lived and worked. It came alive for us. But there is an overlooked story in the history of St. Francis, a story which I would like to share with you today. It is every bit as painful and humiliating as Francis languishing in a medieval prison or struggling with the stigma, his wounds of Christ, Today, I want to share with you a story which echoes the words of Jesus in today's gospel from Matthew. Do not think I have come to bring peace to the earth, but a sword. For I have come to set man against man, father against father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be a member of one's household. This is a heavy passage. It's important to remember about St. Francis that before all the miracles, before all the teaching, before the preaching to animals, that Francis was first and foremost a son who had a father and a mother who loved him deeply, who clothed him with the finest clothes and made his life easy. They supported Francis even as he put his life in danger as a knight, becoming a soldier to fight in battles with neighboring city-states. And many of you might know that after one such battle, Francis was imprisoned after his army suffered a terrible defeat. Francis was a prisoner for months in this prison. His father, a wealthy cloth merchant in Assisi, spent a fortune to rescue him and bring him home from prison. His father's wish in bringing him home was for Francis to come home and be productive, industrious, to make money, to take on the family business and continue the bloodline. But Francis, as we all know, felt called in a very different direction. On the outskirts of Assisi, one day, Francis heard the voice of God calling from a cross. Francis, God said, rebuild my church. Francis did not need to hear this twice. His heart leapt at the opportunity to follow God's will there was one problem though, Francis needed money. His solution was simple. He crept back into town, he crept into his father's cloth warehouse and stole a bale of silk, a really expensive commodity at that time, 
and sold it to help repair the old church. Francis' father was furious at this theft. So furious, in fact, that we are told that his father locked him up in the house and beat him. But the worst was yet to come. In the ultimate act of humiliation, Francis' his father marched his son in front of the bishop and all of Assisi to renounce Francis' property and his birthright. But Francis flipped the script and he took it one step further. And without hesitation, without missing a beat, Francis took off of his cloak, he took off his shoes, he removed his tunic, he even removed his underwear. He stripped himself completely naked in front of the bishop and his father and all of the town and renounced his ties to his father and his large inheritance and he walked away. There is no mention of Francis ever speaking to or interacting with his father ever again. Do not think I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father. One's foes will be a member of one's household. These words from Jesus, this story from the life of St. Francis, it teaches us so much about the cost of being a disciple. So much about the perils of trying to listen and follow God's call in our lives. It teaches us that taking on the mantle of Christ calling oneself a Christian, living fully into our baptismal vows to feed the hungry, to clothe the sick or clothe the naked, to tend the sick, to love God and love neighbor. Doing that puts us on a collision course with common, seductive, temporal ideologies that would have us do the very opposite. Make money, obtain power, hoard wealth, Doctrines of domination which we are consciously and subconsciously trained to follow in society from an early age. Doctrines which would have us value profits over people and value judgment over compassion. So we have these two ideologies, our baptismal vows, this vow of domination that we are trained to follow from an early age. And when these ideologies collide, our identities who we truly are, what we truly value, who and what we truly worship are on full display. This is a vulnerable place where these vows, where these values collide. This is a place where we are stripped naked and bare for all to see. This is a place, whether we would like it or not, where we are forced to make a choice. Choices which can divide us in painful ways. Choices which can divide not only families, but entire nations. Father against son, mother against daughter, brother against sister. Members of households becoming one another's foes. It's real. We heard one example about it with Francis this morning. We have heard Jesus allude to this division in his missionary discourse as he prepares his disciples to go out and spread the gospel to all people. But St. Paul's, haven't we all had this experience in our lives? Haven't we all had this experience where we are made to choose between God and culture? to choose between our baptismal vows and our allegiances to a culture of consumerism and domination. For many Americans in the last decade, faithful Christians have been put in a position to do this, have had this fight in the political arena. The elections of 2016 and 2020, it divided friends and families, not only on political fault lines, but on religious ones as well. Christians on the left and right were at each other's throats as one struggled to uphold God's greatest commandment to love God, to love neighbor, to respect the human dignity of every human being, including immigrants and people of color, while another group struggled to defend thinly veiled idolatry that excluded those on the margins. American Christians were made to choose at the ballot box, baptismal vows or political party allegiance Should I champion people, or should I champion cheap religious piety? What followed after those elections? 
father against son, mother against daughter, brother against sister, members of the household become one's foes. It's real. The division is real. Friends, our discipleship, our Christian identity, will inevitably put us in a position to make hard and difficult choices in our lives. This has been true since Christ first walked the earth, since he warned the disciples about all the perils of spreading this radical movement, since Francis stood in front of all of Assisi and renounced his inheritance. Today is a special day because it marks the entrance for some in this congregation to enter this beautiful and sometimes difficult position. Lek, Agat, Dang, your baptism today marks your entrance into this arena where you, like Francis and Jesus and the disciples, are going to be put in tough circumstances. The path is difficult. I'm not gonna lie, it's difficult. But there is good news. This tough journey of discipleship is also a fulfilling one. A journey that may not lead to material wealth, but surely to an abundance of spiritual wealth. A journey where we may feel divided by family and friends, but where we may be gifted new brothers and sisters in Christ, new family. It is scary, but in all of it, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. We heard this again today. We hear it all the time in scripture. God sends this message to Hagar as her faith is tested in the desert. Do not be afraid. Jesus tells the disciples this all over and over and over again in the gospel as this movement collides with empire and a tired orthodoxy. Do not be afraid. So to you, Lek, Agat, Deng, and to all of St. Paul's, to my youth of the cathedral, to all of Rome, take heart, do not be afraid as you renew your baptismal vows today. Know that you are not alone. We walk this road, this pilgrimage road of discipleship, fraught with difficult choices and moments that will leave us stripped and bare. But we walk it and we walk it together. And thanks be to God. Amen.